Are you tired of Windows infinite loading screens? Well then, give Linux a try. Just look at how clean and beautiful it is. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can install Arch Linux with Hyperland. Hyperland works with other Linux distros too, but Arch Linux seems to be the most popular and the hardest one to install. Also, you're gonna be able to dual boot with Windows. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, just go to archlinux.org slash download. This is where official mirrors are listed. Just click on a server that's close to you and download this ISO file. Now plug in your USB. I assume that you have Ventoy already installed on your USB. If you don't, all it takes is just one click to install it. Now put the image file to your USB drive. We need some space to install Arch Linux. Just search for disk management. In my case, I'm going to shrink the F drive. Just right click on it and shrink volume. Here where it says enter the amount of space to shrink in megabyte. For in my case, I'm going to go 100,000 megabytes and that gives us roughly 97 gigs. Once you're done, just restart. Oh boy. Okay, I'll, I'll be back. One eternity later. While your PC is booting, just press your BIOS key. It depends on your motherboard. So in my case, it's F2. So I'm going to do F2. I also have a password for BIOS. I'm going to enter that. Now find the boot section in your BIOS settings and disable the secure boot. Make sure your USB is at the top. Now go to exit tab and exit saving changes. Now you're going to see this screen. Just press enter twice. You're going to hear this beeping sound. That's totally normal. Just go with the default option, press enter, wait for it to load everything. And then there you go. Now let's make the font a little bit bigger. Enter in this command. I'm going to use Wi-Fi to connect to internet, but if you have an internet cable, you can also plug it in. That way you don't have to mess with all of this. IWCTL allows you to use your Wi-Fi here. So we're going to use that. Just type in device list and you're going to see your Wi-Fi here. And then do station WLAN 0 get networks. And after that, just type in station WLAN 0 connect and the name of the network. And just enter in password. If you didn't get any errors, that means it's working. But let's check it before installation. Just type in ping google.com dash c5 or how many times you want to send a request. If you got something like this, that means your Wi-Fi is working. Type in this command. Now we can get to the installation part. This part is very important. Please don't skip here. If you mess this up, you, you'll mess up your system. Okay, if you want to dual boot, we first have to identify your Windows drive. Just type in LSBLK. In order to identify your Windows drive, you want to be looking for a partition that is around 100 megs or 200 megs sometimes. I Here you can clearly see I have one drive. That's my NVMe drive, but this name can be different. Now type in CF disk slash dev slash the name of your windows drive if you don't see the free space that means you have identified the wrong drive I have my free space here and that means we're on the right track now using the arrow keys hover over free space and press enter just type in 1g and press enter and go to type and efi system you use your arrow keys again and once you've done that hover over free space again and just do enter this time go with the default size which is the maximum size you can get out of this free space it's going to default to linux system so we don't have to change the type now go to write type in yes and quit okay now type in lsplk you should see new partitions all we have to do is just format them. Use mkfs.fat for the EFI partition.
Now do a rob up and do it for the other. This time it's gonna be x4. If it asks you this, you can just say yes. Let's use the arc install command now. Just go to this configuration. Manual partitioning. First locate that one gig of space. Just do enter on it. And assign a month point of slash boot. Now for the next one, enter, assign month point and slash. There you go. It should look something like this. You should have that one gig of FAT32 and your main drive. Okay, once you're okay with it, just confirm and exit. Now the rest is just very simple. You can also adjust the language and everything, but I'm going to go with default settings. What we want to do is just bootloader chosen as grub, set a root password, add a user, Make sure to add it as a super user, confirm and exit. Now on profile, we don't want to install any UI or any drivers. We're going to use a script that will handle all of them for us. But for the audio, just go with Pipewire, kernels, Linux, network configuration, use network manager. And we need some additional packages. Just type in slash OS prober slash nano check this configuration one more time so go to this configuration and see if you've assigned month points correctly go back and just start the installation let it do its thing while it's installing, just hit that subscribe button, like the video, so we can see each other one more time. Okay, once the installation is done, you're gonna see this message. Now go with the last option. Sometimes our install fails to install Grub. Let's make sure it's installed properly. So sudo pacman dash s efi boot manager grub mtools dos fs tools just say yes you can type in lsblk to see what's mounted as boot type in this command If you get this no error reported, that means it's good. The last thing is let's update the config file. So grub dash make config dash o slash boot slash grub slash grub dot cfg. Now exit and reboot. Because we didn't change the boot order, it still boots to Ventoy. Just do Control Alt Delete. This is gonna restart your PC, giving you the chance to enter the BIOS. Again, press on your BIOS key, it's F2 for me, and I'm just gonna enter my password. Go to boot section again. You're gonna see Grub. Just take it to top. And once you've done that, exit saving changes. There you go. Now we're gonna see this menu. And the first option, enter on that. Okay, now we need to log in. So if you didn't create any user, you can lo log in as root. Once you've logged in, if you have an internet cable, you don't have to do this setup. But if you have a Wi-Fi, you're going to have to do this. Just type in NMCLI. 
make sure your Wi-Fi is detected and just do NMCLI R Wi-Fi on and do NMCLI D Wi-Fi list. This is going to list all of the networks around you. Now just type in NMCLI D Wi-Fi connect and the name of the network and then the ask flag. Just enter in your password. If you didn't get any errors, everything should work fine. Again, let's double check. Now type in this command. If it wasn't able to find your Windows entry point, you're going to have to do additional things. Let's make sure that Nano is installed. You can do that by sudo pacman-s nano. And now just type in this command and go all the way down. Let's make sure Osprober is installed. Now the last thing we need to install is Fuse 3. Now type in this command again. And it should find the Windows Enter Point now. We're almost there. The last step is to git clone a repository and just run a script to install everything that we need. Now do git clone this URL. Shout out to Jekyllit for this repository. We're going to use his script to install everything. CD into Archiperland. And do sudo pacman syu and just run the install script. I could just do enter on that. I would recommend you to go with yay. Do enter on that. This is going to significantly change how the UI looks like. So you want to go with the correct things. If you don't have Bluetooth on your PC, you may not choose it. Also, if your laptop is not ROG, you also don't have to choose that. If you're not into Pokemon, you also don't have to choose that. But the rest, I would say you better choose. I made a mistake and chose ROG to be installed as well on an Acer laptop. Just enter, enter, and it's gonna do its thing. Now keep an eye on the installer because it may ask for your root password depending on what you have chosen to install. Once the installation is done, it's going to ask you your keyboard layout. I'm going to go with the default. Here I'm going to go with the first option because this laptop has a 1080p uh, screen. So I'm going to say no to this. There is a rainbow borders animation. I personally don't like anything like that. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to disable that. So just say yes to disable. Okay, once done, it's going to ask you, would you like to reboot? It didn't reboot even though I said yes to it, probably because we didn't run it with sudo permissions. So just type in sudo reboot. As you can see, we have windows on the boot options. Welcome to freedom. Okay, this is how the UI looks like. Just click on that hint text and it's going to show you all of the shortcuts. Let's see if we have Firefox installed. Oh, okay, no, not installed. Uh, let's install Firefox. Windows Enter will open up a terminal, for example. Type in this to install. 
Let's see if Firefox is installed now. Yep, it is. You can do Windows W to choose a wallpaper. Also, make sure to set it as lock screen wallpaper. All right, let's see if we can boot the Windows now. Updates again. There you go, it just works. You can also boot the Windows. We're only using 1.5 gigs of RAM which is almost half of what Windows uses at idle. That's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. Subscribe.